The Five Star Movement is an incredible anomaly to the eyes of foreign leaders and people. Its nature in itself is not something unseen before. What is incredible about the Five Star Movement is where it is now and what it represents for Italy. Some may tell you it was the result of years of Italian corruption and the movement's rise to power was nothing more than the people using the tools of democracy to appoint the people they trusted into government. Others may describe the root of the problem as something deeper, as the corruption not only of the system but of the perception of voters who prefer charm to experience and eloquence to competence. Some instead say that it's the fall of liberal democracies, and just like some other countries before us, Italy will vote for stricter government action in exchange for some personal freedom. By that I don't mean fascism or communism, mind you, but something more sneaky, like what is happening in Hungary and Russia, where people demand a stronger government in order to have less responsibility. These are all valuable points that have some truth in them, but I have my own theories that may be or may not be more true of those I listed before. But let's save those for later. Let's actually go through the history of the Five Star Movement and the more notorious people behind it. I am aware this is hard to believe, but in the past few years I talked a lot about the Five Star Movement in general without mentioning Beppe Grillo, not even once. Grillo is an Italian comedian, actor and TV personality. He was born in Genoa in 1948 and became a very successful and rich showman starting from the 80s onwards. He became famous thanks to his somewhat cynical comedy and his pessimistic and offensive political commentary that appeared to many people. Grillo will eventually be banned from public and private TV broadcasts due to his outrageous statements that were beginning to become defamatory and dangerous. Grillo then took to the internet, where he reigned supreme. He created a blog where he would make his political commentaries, this time even more brutal due to the lack of censorship that only the early internet could provide. Over the years he would gather a huge following. In 2005 he started many campaigns against corruption and even bought ads in important websites like the newspaper Repubblica, where he demanded the resignation of notoriously corrupt politicians like Antonio Fazio, former governor of the Italian National Bank that was accused of such crime. In 2007 he organized the first Italian political rally entirely advertised through the internet called V Celebration Day. The V in the V movement stands for the Italian word for fuck you, which is vaffanculo. The Vafanculo movement eventually became the Five Star Movement two years later, an anti-establishment party full of people of humble origins and competence that wanted to make a difference and run for office to represent the people that do not feel represented by whoever was in power at the time. One interesting thing about the way the party functions is that to this day a lot of the more important decisions and elections in the party are done online through online polls. After the 2013 elections, the Five Star Movement won about 25% of the seats into Parliament, which suddenly made them a force to be reckoned. Even though they won 25% of the votes, due to Calderoli's electoral law, which favored coalitions over unique parties, the Five Star Movement only got about 100 seats in Parliament, but this only made their case stronger. Seeing how his party was becoming more and more institutionalized, Grillo decided to step down in 2014, leaving his position of party secretary to Luigi Di Maio. Grillo is an eccentric millionaire who owns many cars, yachts and several houses, though unlike politicians of his kind, he holds more restrictive political ideas, ones that undermine individualism and liberalism in favor of populism and anti-democracy. He thinks that direct democracy is the way to go instead of representative democracy and wants the party and the country to be ruled like that. Luigi Di Maio will change that.
Di Maio was born in Avellino in 1986. He is a young and clever man who, despite having never finished university, is today one of the most powerful men in the country. It all started from the Five Star Movement. He took advantage of the spike in popularity and the ignorance of the voters and whoever was in charge to rise among the ranks and lead the party to where it stands at the moment. When he was elected in, into parliament in 2013, he was vice president of the Chamber of Deputies. Today, he is the Minister of Foreign Affairs. Di Maio is a genius when it comes to power grabbing. He is quick to perceive what the people want and adapts his views and message in order to gain as much appeal as possible. This has proven to work not only with the more naive section of society, but also with the enlightened people like Draghi, who allow them to stay in the foreign ministry. However, if I had to guess, the reason why Di Maio remained there is, is probably because Draghi told them either you go or the useless financial bonuses go and Di Maio being the weasel that he is preferred power to his party's political goals. Someone who has done something similar to Di Maio although to a less successful extent is Matteo Salvini from Lega. If you want me to talk about the history of Lega Nord be sure to like the video. If we reach 30 likes I will make it happen. Now let's get back to Di Maio. He has a centrist opinion on most things. That is because he tries to be as vague as possible to the topic at hand in order to not polarize his voter base and the diverse currents in the Five Star Movement. Grillo's party was so big at first because it allowed everyone to speak out and to share his or her opinions on anything. Mayo actually contributed in making the party more organized and more cohesive. We have to give him credit for that. Though aside for his clever power grabbing, he's not very good when it comes to politics. If I had a subscriber for each time he demonstrated to not know anything about a certain topic or said something dumb, I would probably be the Italian PewDiePie. Sadly, his ineptitude costed us a lot more than cringe. Just a few years ago, Di Maio signed the Silk Road Agreement with China, binding a portion of our infrastructure to a foreign power. Words cannot describe how fucking terrible that is, but Di Maio doesn't care. He's got a big loan and now he gets to mishandle a lot more money. Hell yeah! It's not like he will have to pay them back or anything. That's the country's problem. Di Maio is also very incoherent and dishonest. He has been accused of defamation by basically every single party during the political campaigns, even going as far as to associate the Democratic Party to a child kidnapping controversy that they had nothing to do with. But this hasn't stopped them from allying with any party he came across for the sake of preserving his position into government. Di Maio is no longer head of the Five Star Movement, he resigned, but he remains one of the more influential party members. Many of the former Five Star Movement voters who were appealed by the movement for its anti-establishment projections see Di Maio as the embodiment of what went wrong with the party. Many think that he deprived the party of his identity only for his selfish gains. Honestly, I have to say that I share this sentiment. If you take Di Maio away from the picture and don't look over some of the disturbing aspects of Grillo's personal life, there is a lot to admire about the Five Star Movement and his ideals. If Di Maio is the embodiment of the decay of the Five Star Movement, well, conveniently enough, someone else also embodies its original ideas and their unwillingness to die down. Let's give some focus to Alessandro Di Battista. Di Battista is, well, at least was, one of the most notorious members of the movement. When he was member of the Chamber of Deputies, he single-handedly led the opposition in certain occasions, most notoriously calling out Renzi's mistakes whenever it was needed. His rants were not only reasonable and clear, but also music to the ears of many. His use of stylistic devices and public speaking skills easily beats the majority of his contemporaries. Di Battista started to direct his criticism to his own party the moment when Di Maio started making deals with other parties, when he started in a way to sell the party's ideals until it became a blank slate. In fact, Di Battista, as soon as Draghi became prime minister, left the movement. 
Di Battista is also an idealist, but the type of idealist you look up to is exceptional in every way and the direct opposite of Di Maio because he's not power hungry. In fact, he refused to run in 2018 when his re-election was a certainty. He is non-ideological just like all of his colleagues, but manages to express the sentiment of many in a way that only few can do and for that he deserves my respect. I was sad to see his departure from the movement because now I I don't think there is nothing left in it that resembles what it once was. After reflecting on this phenomenon for long enough, I've concluded that the rise of the Five Star Movement was most likely caused by distrust of the average citizen towards the well-educated, the people with degrees, years of experience and connections. The reason for this is simple, they think that these knowledgeable people are of another kind, they have nothing in common with them, so they don't trust them. They prefer to elect someone who worked in a hotel or sold beverages at the stadiums. They think people similar to them are more likely to care about their problems and reflect their interest in parliament. Reality is a lot more bleak. The Five Star Movement has shown us that there is no correlation between titles and well governance. The Five Star Movement has turned out just as opportunistic, corrupt, out of touch and most importantly inadequate to governance, even worse than Lega's leadership or the pretentious Democratic Party. That being said, I think parties like the Five Star and people like Di Battista are necessary for a working democracy because they remind us not to be passive and to the leaders that their position is binding to our approval. I think that the inclusion of the Five Star Movement to the establishment will serve as a wake-up call and hopefully the old parties will get back on track with being productive as they should be. However, I think it's gonna take a while before the people figure out what's the right way to vote and most importantly how to select their leaders. This video was partly inspired by Carlo Calenda's book called I Mostri, which goes over the main problems of Italy giving them the shape of mythical monsters. My conclusions though come from my own reflections, feel free to let me know if you agree or disagree with what I have to say, I will be happy to respond. As for the rest, what do you think of the 5 star movement? Do you think they are good despite their limitations? Let me know, once again 30 likes and I will make a video on Lega next time. Be sure to like and subscribe for more and I will see you next time.